सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली द वॉर ऑन द यूक्रेनियन फ्रंट फॉलोइंग रशियन इन्वेशन ऑफ यूक्रेन has seemed to be still mitigated now for several months and that is the reason we haven't talked about it very much because when a war gets still mitigated i know it's a terrible thing to say that people are lobbing shells at each other or carrying out little actions here and there it does cause still cause enormous amount of human misery and damage but it doesn't become a story so what do we talk about that war that war has now had one major event i will not say it's a turning point in the war in the sense of one side getting an upper hand over the other but it's a turning point only to the extent that something unprecedented in the history of modern warfare has happened that is a major dam a hydroelectric dam in this case with a huge reservoir of water has been either blown up blown up from inside or blown up from outside we don't know but definitely this dam has been destroyed this is the nova kakhovka dam the dam is very big i will tell you something more about the dam and there will be debates about who has taken it down that means was it blown up from inside which means explosives or huge explosive charges were placed underneath it it's a large dam it will not it can't be blown up with a with a normal ied or a hand grenade or a bunch of grenades it needs a humongous charge it was a dam built to survive a nuclear attack from the top remember so whatever has happened had to happen at least technically from lower down from within from deep down deep down a big explosion the boom takes a dam out now blowing up a dam in war time what happens is it a legitimate target in war no it is not a legitimate target so while we will keep on debating who was responsible who destroyed the dam and russians will blame the ukrainians and ukrainians will blame the russians and the friends of ukrainians will blame the russians also that is most of the western world i don't know how many friends of the russians there aren't aren't that many will speak up and those that seem sort of neutral that is china which is quite neutral india which is at least vocally or verbally neutral in terms of substance it is not that neutral right but at the same because india is a member of the quad and quad has included in one of its joint statements a para which is very similar to united nations resolutions asking russia to vacate from ukraine using pretty much the same language without naming anybody so i will not say india is neutral neutral but reasonably neutral so these countries will not speak up on behalf of russia and blame ukraine but if you see the media if you see the media media that we read most of all that is the so called quote and quote western media right that is also seen as pro ukraine in that you see a lot of evidence and suggestion that this has it had has been done by the russians at the same time if you go to social media to tele- telegram channels which have been giving you giving us videos and news on this war and the russians are very active there russian state russian disinformation machinery and also russian information machinery that's legitimate they are all very active there they would suggest that the ukrainians have done it so first of all first of all i'll tell you about the laws of war and why why this is not a legitimate target in any war so whoever has done it is guilty of a major war crime once again we are not sitting in judgment over who's done it because we don't know yet i don't think the rest of the world knows yet also and the, in these situations i'm not even sure this will ever come out unlike the nord stream gas pipeline sabotage because that was a gas pipeline sabotage and the western media itself reported it was the american media that reported that this was carried out by ukrainians a bunch of small bunch of ukrainians in an underwater boat say about 6 or 8 ukrainians you can blow up a gas pipeline like that something like that happened but but on this one it will be tough nevertheless let me tell you what does international law say on this and i have picked it up from igor sushko igor sushko who is a ukrainian american so he has a point of view which will be which will be pro ukrainian so on his tweet he says russia blowing up the dam is going to have severe consequences the act equates 
to the use of weapons of mass destruction under international law. So I will distance myself from his insinuation or his allegation that the Russians have blown up this dam. If you take that aside, which I am taking it aside because I don't know and we don't know, so we will not jump to conclusions and we, we have no dog in the race, right? We are not on this side or that side. There is a war going on. Hopefully the war will be over and anybody's territory that's been invaded or anybody's sovereignty that's been violated will eventually be restored. That is what you might say about the war, but no sides. And he goes on to say that dams like the Dnipro Dam in Nova Kakhovka are protected by the laws of war and the Geneva Convention. Destroying it would be considered a weapon of mass destruction and an indiscriminate war crime. Article 56 of the 1977 Additional Protocol to Geneva Conventions provides as follows. And now I am quoting from the Article 56 of the Additional Protocol of Geneva Conventions as inserted in 1977. And this protocol, this para says, I will read the entire para to you. It says, and I quote from the convention, works and installations containing dangerous forces, namely dams, dikes and nuclear electrical generating stations shall not be made the object of attack even where these objects are military objectives. If such attack may cause the release of dangerous forces and consequent severe losses among the civilian population. Other military objectives located at or in the vicinity of these works or installations shall not be made the subject of attack if such attack may cause the release of dangerous forces from the works or installations and consequent severe losses among the civilian population. Now see what has happened and you will see the pictures also of this destruction of this dam or the consequences of the destruction of this dam. So first of all, first of all, it has released a dangerous force which is enormous amounts of this water is flowing. This dam, the storage area, by the way, this is among the largest dams in the world among the largest storage areas in the world. In fact, it has more storage than any dam in India. And you can count the biggest ones in India, Terry Dam, Bakra Dam, Nagarjun Sagar. Those are the big dams in India with a lot of storage. This dam has more storage because Euro European rivers are big. They are big enough for ship-sized vessels to ply into them. Also, the Dnipro is the fourth longest river in Europe. It is 2200 kilometers of which about 921 kilometers flows through Ukraine. So Dnipro begins near Smolensk in Russia. You can see to the map, goes into Belarus and then comes sort of meanders and comes into Ukraine and then divides Ukraine into two halves, the eastern half and the western half. The eastern half by now is mostly occupied the Russian forces. The western half of more than the western half, that is the bulk of Ukrainian territory, about say 15-17 percent on the on the eastern side, 15-17 percent of the entire Ukrainian territory, that's occupied by the Russians. Whereas the rest on the western side is with Ukraine. This river is the dividing line between the two battling forces. Now in any warfare, it can be a mountain, it can be a mountain range, a ridge, a river, a canal, that usually becomes a dividing line. So this has become the dividing line. It's well known that Ukraine has been planning a big counter-offensive at the Russian occupying forces. And that counter-offensive ultimately has to be launched across the river. So this is the river that is now gorging out this enormous amounts of water. In fact, if I see the Russian accounts, then in the Russian townships adjoining this dam, just after this dam, water levels have gone up from anything, anything from seven and a half meters, that is about 25 feet, to 15 meters. 15 meters is enough to drown an entire city. 15 meters is more than 50 feet. That can, that can drown an entire city and the water is coming out. It's a reservoir spanning a land size, spanning 2,155 square kilometers. It is that big. You want to see how other reservoirs are? Terry Dam which has a lot of water, it's one of India's biggest dam, is 52 kilometers square. This is 2,155 kilometers square. Maybe not all of it is so deep, maybe some of it is shallow, but it's a lot of water. And that water level is now going down at the rate of 15 centimeters per hour. So you can see with so such an expanse of water 
if the level is going down by 15 centimeters per hour, how much water is flowing down. Now, 30 kilometers downstream of this dam is also the city of Kherson, critical city of Kherson, which was the <coughs> Russian forces only foothold on the west bank of the Dnieper River. And they had occupied it for nearly eight months. That's when in a series of bold counterattacks from three sides, Ukrainians were able to liberate it. We had in fact done an entire episode of Kata Clutter on this. That was number 1111. I am sharing a link with you. Please take a look. Now, that city now gets flooded. So, the, which means if this isn't mine, you won't have it too. So, that's one way of looking at it, right? Maybe somebody wants to just out of spite do this. <clears throat> Maybe somebody is also concerned that Ukrainians are now starting their counter offensive. And if you read the Western media, there is some indication that something had started on Sunday already. So, this is a way of blocking that counter offensive because if the land on which your heavy forces were to move for counter offensive, if those have all been flooded now, then how do you stage that, that counter offensive? You then have to wait and you might have to wait for a very long time. So, those are things that are being said say, by the Ukrainian side or Ukrainian supporters. To, to argue that the Russians took to gain more from this. But there is a lot of analysis. I see, for example, an article. There is one explanation on why it may hurt the Ukrainians more. It says, in the near term, it's hurting the Ukrainian more, said Mark Kansian, a retired Marine officer and defense expert with the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS. And it may hurt them more because, one, it slows down or it blocks their counteroffensive. And second, because it floods a lot of Ukraine's cropping areas. That is where Ukraine's main export to the world is, is food grain, mostly wheat and sunflower seeds. Now, if these areas are flooded, that is like using food as an act of war. That is the allegation from that side and that's where it hurts Ukraine more in the short run. In the long run, however, the same article tells us it hurts Russia more and why? It says the damage to the Russian control dam would make it difficult for the Ukrainian troops to cross into Crimea and other Russian occupied cities in the south. On the other hand, it could eventually cut water off from Crimea and other parts of Russian held territory. Flooding the region could also affect Russian defenses and supply routes. So, Russian defenses, the frontline Russian defenses on the eastern bank of the river have all got flooded. So, Russian units are also having to withdraw from there because nobody likes to live in flooded trenches and bunkers. At the same time, Crimea, which is the price and which is what the Russians occupied in 2014, sort of becoming a kind of causes belly which still continues. That gets its water supply from Dnieper River. That water supply comes through a canal. It's an old canal called the North Crimean Canal. That is the canal to which the Ukrainians had stopped water supply after the Russians occupied it. And then the Russians moved ahead finally and they opened supplies to it. Once again now, if this water is wasted, there will be no water left to go into this canal. Now, the Russians are saying that they will not have a drinking water shortage in Crimea because the canal is still holding enough water and they can ration it for some time. But the fact is, it will be a big stress for them. So, this will be, this will be quite damaging to them as well. Once again, <coughs> come back to the war crime aspect of it, no matter who's done it. Now, this para in Article 56 of the Additional Protocol of Geneva Conventions also says, work and installations containing dangerous forces, namely dams, dikes and nuclear electrical generating stations. So, I told you earlier this affects a large civilian population. So, to that extent, it fulfills the criteria of being a war crime under this clause. Also, remember that this dam reservoir, because it's such a humongous reservoir, the biggest nuclear plant in Europe, that is the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant that is 5.7 gigawatt. It's a humongous nuclear power plant. The cooling for that power plant is provided by the waters of the reservoir of the Nova Kakhovka Dam. So, the management of the nuclear power plant says that right now there isn't that much concern. International Atomic Energy Authority, the regulator, they've also said the watchdog. They've also said that right now we don't see a threat, but ultimately this water will run out because once a dam is broken, you can't fix a dam for years. It's a dam built in 1956. It's a dam filled with soil, a little bit of rock, also has a core of clay. 
right so once a dam like this goes away you can't you can't just use engineering to build it look at the size of the dam the dam is not very tall these are not himalayan dams indian dams tend to be very tall only 30 meters tall but look at how wide it is it is 3273 meters that is almost 3.3 kilometers wide a dam like that goes away you can't just build it in no time that means the loss of this water will carry on for a long time and how much water it is this reservoir holds 15 million acre feet of water you want to see it on another scale it's very difficult for me to calculate and tell you what is what it will be 18 cubic kilometers of water it's a lot of water suffice it to see it as maybe more than twice as much water as bhakra nangal if you look at the listing of the 50 biggest reservoir dam reservoirs in the world nova kakhovka comes at 48 right so it's not among the biggest biggest 10 or 15 those are first one is in zimbabwe then america canada russia there are lots of them it is the 48th and remember in the first 50 no indian dam even features no terry no bhakra no nagarjun sagar that is for the amount of water it holds so it still holds among the largest bodies of water in the world now both sides will continue blaming each other russians are saying that this is ukrainian sabotage ukrainians are saying russian the terrorist russians have done it videos have surfaced on telegram channels and elsewhere that show a big explosion that, that's taken place from within the dam that means charges were placed under the dam Zelensky in October in a speech had said that the Russian forces have placed charges under the dam and they will blow it up anytime now the fact is that the dam has been under Russian occupation from very early days of the war because they took the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and then they took the dam also so it's been with them at the same time it's widely believed that ukrainians earlier carried out the destruction or the damage to that Nord stream gas pipeline so once again in such a messy situation nobody quite knows what is happening but one one very curious thing has surfaced and this is again from an ukrainian origin U journalist but working for politico europe and she's nika melkozirova and the reason i'm quoting this is because there is a document attached to it and we've checked out the document it looks authentic and i'm sharing also screenshots of the document with you in your screen so she says that on may 31 russian government passed a special legislation barring investigation at hazardous production facilities and accidents of hydraulic structures occurring due to hostilities and sabotage until 2028 so may 31 they passed a law that said if there is any sabotage or destruction at any hydraulic plants etc it cannot be investigated until 2028 now why would they do it and add that to five days before this happens now one interpretation would be that they were going to do it so they were covering their officials from any questioning later on but the other is do you think the russians are so stupid that they, if they are planning to do this then they will also pass a law at the same time accordingly so they'll be seen as usual suspects. So we don't know. So what you see on your screen first is that particular para in the resolution in Russian. The whole resolution will run through your screen as we talk. We've got the whole document translated obviously by using internet. We don't know Russian. But I will read one key para to you. And this is para 10 on page 4. It says until January 1, 2028, Technical investigation of accidents at hazardous production facilities and accidents of hydraulic structures that occurred as a result of military operations, sabotage and terrorist act is not carried out. So, did the Russians mean to cover their officials from any future action and thereby, thereby pass this law in a hurry? Or the second thing is, if they knew they were going to carry out this action, would they be so dumb as to pass this law at that time? We don't know. What we know, however, is that this is a great human tragedy. It's a, it's a tragedy not just for humans, but also for animals, particularly for animals who are so dear to humans, say pets, for example. So I'm sharing with you this video in the end to conclude this episode of Kartak Letter, which is a video shared by Zelensky on Twitter. So once again, war is a bad thing and destruction of big infrastructure projects, destruction of big civilian facilities in warfare is a war crime. Who's done it? We don't know as yet.